Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to finish off this little page here in Small Victories by Johanna Basford and we're going to do a new technique for this last little dinosaur. So up the top here you remember we talked about layering and how to get the most out of your pencils. Then we talked about blending and today we're going to talk about shading and highlighting your coloring. So I've got my Derwent um, Lightfast pencils again and I've got these. I just wanted to show you here on the little color wheel what colors we're going to do. So we used already, we had the yellow green, we have had the yellow orange with the red violet and blue violet. So today we're going to do, so if you see here, they kind of make like a bit of a triangle there. So we're going to use this blue green up the top here now with the red orange. So we kind of have like a relatively evenly spaced color palette all around. We kind of skipped every second one really. And um, so I think that should look really nice now if you don't have one of these little color wheels they are really handy because when especially when it comes to shading here i just wanted to show you a couple of things so let's just go on to this red orange that we're going to use for the main part of the body so for example that like we're going to use um, a few different methods of shading so one is to add black so you can see what happens if you add black to the red orange um, and then one of the other ways we're going to do it is we're going to also add the complementary color and that is the blue green and that will also help you shade up a bit so we've got a couple of methods there and obviously we also have the method where you just use a dark um, way so, so let's see here so this is the blue so this is similar to the blue green so I just wanted to show you what happens sort of when you add that um, so have a bit of a play with one of those color wheels if you have one and just look at them They have lots of information on them. This is a mini one. I know you can get this exact one in a larger one so You learn a whole lot just by having a play around with it So and you can see here on the back as well That's what happens if you add white to your color if you add gray to your color and the bottom is if you add black to your color and you will also see on the side there is also also written down what those different things are called. So we have the hue, we have the tone, and we have the shade. That's what those three. Um, oh no, the tint. The <laughs> the hue is the color. Then we have the tint. The tone is when you add gray, and then you have shade, which is when you add black. So let me just show you the main colors we're going to use for our sort of red orange um, I might add in some yellow as well we'll see so my lightest one is going to be, be the flame which is like an orange then because we're doing a red orange I want to add a little bit of red to that so I'm going with a lighter red on the orangey side which is the scarlet then I got the merlot and I've also got the mass black which is like a reddish black so for our blue green we have light aqua turquoise green and then we have the dark turquoise and then we have the mallard green and I'm thinking I'll probably also add a black to that one because as I said I will do a few different ways of shading so I'll probably do the let's see I'm just gonna grab it from over here this one here that's this is the um, the midnight black so this is a blue black that's one of the things I do like with this set is that it has three different types of black so it has a black black a red black and a blue black so that means you can kind of match them up with the whether you're using warm tones or um, cold tones so i've got this little mega swatch uh, color swatch book that i sort of use sometimes i swatch pencils out in it and sometimes i'll do like a little coloring sample so this is the one you can see here <laughs> i was just playing around seeing which green uh, and um, red violet combination I wanted to use I'm just going to put it sideways just because I like working from left to right rather than up to down so I'm going to show you three different ways just quickly um, so I'm just going to speed up the 
the speed here a little bit because you're going to see this on the dinosaur as well. So this first one here, I'm layering down first a layer of the flame, which is our orange. We're going to do our scarlet red and then we're going to do our merlot. So that's when you use a darker, a darker shade of like your same color. So that's what I'm going to do in this one. And then we're going to show one where we're going to use black. And then we're going to show one where we're going to use our sort of blue green. So I'll show you the three different ways that you can, that you can shade. Now, the reason I decided to do this sort of now um, is just simply because I've got um, a couple of things. Like I probably do one or two of these more than the other, but I really wanted to show you all those three different ways of shading. So at least by doing it here, um, I can just really show you how you can do it and I can kind of explain it for you. So as you can see, so I'm going in with that Merlot, I'm just doing a layer and now I'm going to go back and I'm going to repeat this whole process. So this is the um, the layering that we talked about in the first dinosaur and we're using, uh, using the layering to create our shading. So it all works together. So I've got these um, layer of the flame down now so let's go back in with our scarlet and you can kind of see that I'm starting the darker colors from the right working left um, only reason I'm doing this and you don't have to is it's just sometimes easier to go from a slightly firmer pressure and loosen it up than it is to go from a light pressure and adding more it's just one of those things, it's easier to release your grip than it is to tighten it while you're already doing something. So that will, that's why I'm doing it that way. It just helps a little bit to create a bit more control as well. Um, so that's, you can see here, so that's our darker, yeah, just using the Merlot as the shading. So we're just starting again now and I'm just layering down another layer of flame and I'm, again I'm going to go, then go ahead and add in a layer of scarlet and for this one here we are going to use our mask black for our shading. So I'm just going to begin to lay down, as you see, I've started putting in my first layer of the black and at the moment you can sort of see that it looks similar to the other one. That's purely because I've only got one layer down. Um, once we then go ahead and add our second layer of each, then you will see it will deepen up a whole lot more and we're going to get a much deeper, darker shadow. Now. Doing it this way doesn't mean you can't combine all of these different methods. So what you'll probably see me do is I'll do, especially sort of on the main part of the body, I will probably do that first part that we did. So using the flame, the scarlet and the merlot, and then I might come on top with something like my black afterwards and darken up. I tend to use black as my last sort of resort if that makes sense because once you put your black down it is really really dark you can't really go much darker unless you go in with like a black like fine like a micro like a pen or something like that like a permanent oh my gosh my brain is seriously not working what are they called fine liners thank you <laughs> 
but look at this now like you can really see the difference that the black there is much deeper and darker than the other one and that's just with two layers like you can add in more layers and get it even darker so we're just going to do our last little little rectangle here so starting exactly the same with my flame and my scarlet and then we're going to go in with the mallard green which was the sort of the darkest the darkest blue green that i've got it's actually a really pretty color i really like that one so i think mallard isn't that like a duck is that the type of duck that has that beautiful sort of blue green head i think so but it's a really pretty color so i think it will work well as a shading so let's have a look now what happens when we put this mallard green in with our red orange so you can see like obviously these are all by oil based pencils so they're a little bit more translucent than your wax based so you can see it sort of shines through a little bit but you can also see that it's definitely darkening up a lot so when we then go in now and we're going to do a second layer of each of them you're going to see that it's going to darken up quite a lot when we get to um, the last layer here and i'll i might show you i might use this i'm thinking on maybe just like a small spot I, i'm not planning on using this as my main method of shading i think this particular one here um just because i want to use the merlot mainly but i might just show you maybe on the legs we'll see but i just wanted to show you properly here first before we started really coloring in so so that you got to have a good look at all of them because you might find a method that works better for you that you might not have necessarily tried before so um so you look, look at this like it's getting really nice and dark now and it's creating a really lovely dark shadow so um so yeah you can really see that this is absolutely a method that works i just want to add a little bit more of the red over the top just so it's not as green and again just layer keep layering if you feel like you need more layers just go for it it doesn't matter if you add more layers you're just going to get deeper color which is great so there you go you can see the three different methods here so let's put these in to um, a little dinosaur so i'm going to pack away this book and um, we're going to get started on the actual coloring so just using this little and this is just my colorless um, blender i just want to use this to show you um, so down the bottom here is where I'm wanting my darker shadows to be. So I'm kind of thinking I want my lights up the top. And this is what we did with the other one. I just really wanted to point this out first. So up the top here, so I'm thinking kind of the light is coming from up here and hitting first up the top or the back of the dinosaur. So that's going to be a lighter spot and then darkening as we come down. Now, also, when we have these little leaves um, or little plates at the top, you would think that the very bottom of these plates will be darker as well compared to the top of them. Also, every overlapping leaf here, whatever they overlap, we're going to go in dark. So, also these back legs, they are underneath, they will get less light. They're further away because they're underneath the dinosaur same underneath here on the neck so once you know where you want your light source to come from everything that's towards that light source light source you want to have light and anything that's away from the light source you want to be darker so I'm going to start exactly what we just did in a little swatching book and I'm just going to start with my lightest color and um, so I'm doing this on the main part of the dinosaur and then I'm going to use that blue green for the leaves. So let's just put a bit of music on and you can watch what I'm doing because it's exactly the same concept as I was just doing showing you in the other one.
so it's time to start out with my scarlet and I'm going to do exactly like I did on the, those little triangles. I'm going to start now from the bottom and s slowly sort of work my way up. So I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not really varying my pressure too much here, but I am going to release a little bit of the pressure as I'm coming upwards as well so I want that underneath that I showed you before to be the darkest area and then I want it to be lighter up the top but obviously this being a, um, a sort of a red orange I want to make sure that I do get a lot of this red into it as well I don't want it to be sort of just just orange although I might as I said bring in a little bit of yellow just on the highlights later on just to give that little bit of a contrast but we'll see what I do. Now with the head here, I'm going to do just the same as I did with the dinosaur just above this and I'm making a bit of a sort of lighter area just on the top lip there. It might be a little bit hard to see but it's just because this head is a bit smaller. Alright, I just had to sharpen my pencil a little bit here. So just to make sure that I sort of can get into these little areas. So that is, yeah, don't don't be scared of sharpening your pencils, you guys. It's it's not going to take off too much. Just have it nice and sharp because you're going to get far more pigment down onto the paper, especially if you're having a relatively smooth paper because a sharp pencil will get into all of those little grooves that are there and give you more pigment down. So... So yes, as I said, I'm just, you can maybe see it if you're on a bigger screen, sort of when I'm editing this, I'm seeing it on a pretty small screen, but you can kind of see that on the face, it had like a little lighter sort of outline. So, um, 
So yeah, I just kind of did the same thing. All right, I'm going to go in with the Merlot and doing the same thing, but I'm not going to go up as far as I did with the Scarlet. So just using my little tiny circles as I always do um, and just working down the bottom here. You can always add in more. As I said, it's before, it's, I keep saying this so many times, pretty much all my videos, but you're better off going in with more light layers than to go in with one heavy layer. You just have far more control. And I think that's why I like the oil-based pencils more than the wax-based pencils, because it suits that style of coloring. And I'm just finding that I've got more control of what I do and I can create more effects. I know with a lot of sort of Prisma colors and those sort of really soft pencils, like yes, they're fast because you can go in and you can add, you know, three layers and you're done. But obviously here I'm on my third layer and you can see I'm far from done. But I still like this effect more than just pushing down heavy and getting lots of pigment down all at once. So I kind of forgot to push over this little face here so that you can see what I'm doing. But you can kind of see, so I've just sort of added in, I'm just showing you now where I just went. You can see that little lighter outline on the top lip there. Now that I've put that mellow in there, it's a bit easier to see what I meant before. So I'm just sort of making sure that it looks like the lip is sort of poking out a little bit and have that contrast with the bottom. So I did mention that I was going to show you that other method as well with the um, the opposite color. So I'm just using the mallard green here on the back legs. Just I thought that was a relatively inconspicuous place to uh, to put these down. So I'm just going to add that in. I'll do a few layers. Um, on top of this afterwards I think and I'll probably end up because they're the bottom legs at the back they're going to be the darkest anyway so I will definitely be adding some black into this but I just wanted to sort of show you how that method sort of worked in practice not just on a little rectangle on a piece of paper so I thought I'd give it a go so I'm just going to start all over again now back in with my flame and just adding in more layers and once I've done this I'm gonna do a little bit of blending so like I did in my last video I'm gonna be using a blending solution and my little paint per stump so I use my um, like odorless mineral spirits there's so many different ones you can use um, I think you can, you can use like Gamsol and Sestet, that all of those sort of things are the same. Some of them smell better than others, but when you do use those, I'm just letting you know now, make sure that you are in a 
very well ventilated area have a window open or a door open something just make sure you have plenty of airflow around you and cork up your bottle afterwards as well because it is a solvent and it's probably not a good idea to breathe that in all that much
Now, I did mention that I always go and releasing sort of my pressure as I'm coming further up there. I still want the layers, but I want them to be really, really light. Now, what you might find is that if you're finding that hard, instead of holding your pencil down here, um, hold your pencil slightly further back and that will literally force you to lighten your pressure just like this so it's if you press too hard when you're holding it that far back you're going to lose control of your pencil and you're not going to be able to well, stay within the lines and and whatnot I've done that so many times now so I've trained myself that I can hold my pencil further down and still be able to control my pressure but that is such a good tip if you're finding that you're pushing down too hard and especially sort of with your oil-based pencils where you really really want those light light layers and you want to layer them in um, rather than just sort of pushing down hard and getting as much pigment down as you want you kind of want to have them sort of shine through so by holding it further back you're going to help release the pressure on the pencil and teach yourself how to loosen up your grip but still maintain control of what you're doing on the paper. All right, so I decided to go ahead and put in a little bit of that yellow. The mustard here is quite nice and I think it will work out well with the flame undertone here. So it sort of brings it in a little bit into that sort of yellow orange, but it's only just on the highlight here that I'm doing it. So um, just to give it a little bit of a glow and got warm sunlight hitting it. And um, I will show you some other highlighting methods using a white pen. So that will be um, like a different method of highlighting as well. You can also, if you don't want to use yellow here, you could use um, just a bl blender pen um, if you wanted to. Or like you can use white if you want it even lighter. So a nice uh, waxy white pencil would do do the trick here as well like the um, I love the Derwent drawing Chinese white it's a really really good one I'm not going to use it today just because I wanted to do the yellow but you can use that as well if you don't like that yellow tone and then we're going to go in and just do some more shadowing so you can see now that we are starting to get a bit of a shape here but we still need more it's still not sort of shaped enough for my liking and we're going to go in a little bit harder later on. So I'm going to go ahead and use this paper stump, they are cheap and inexpensive and I'm going to dip it into this odorless mineral spirit here. So you'll see on my little paper stump there you can see roughly how far up I've dipped it because you can see the little line there and I'm literally just going over everything as I would with a pencil. So I'm not going too hard, it's 
I, th I think one of the things I like by using a paper stump compared to a um, little paintbrush I feel like I've got more control of the amount of solvent that comes out because it soaks in so much um, it doesn't sort of drip off like it would on a paintbrush so I think that helps a bit now, I did forget to go down on the leg here but go down on the leg if you're doing this yourself now if you don't have a solvent something like this to use you could use a blender pen or a blender pencil just make sure that you don't um, push down too hard if you're using a pencil you don't want to burnish the page you want to have the option of being able to add in a little bit more color on top so you don't want to flatten the tooth of the paper so there we go now <laughs> I went over into the the leg a little bit there so I just redipping it a little bit and then I'm just gonna go in and just do the top here and then I'm gonna let all of this dry you want to let it dry properly um, don't be tempted to go in and color on top of it too early so I'm going to leave this be um, until I've done all of the leaves and things on here and then I can go in and do another layer so leave it for at least five minutes at the minimum um, preferably sort of 15 to 20 minutes if you can um, that way you know that the paper is completely dry and you're not going to damage the paper while adding on another layer So I'm going to get started on the leaves now. I want them to be the blue green and I'm going to start with the light aqua here just as my lightest color just because I want the top here of these leaves to, uh, to be really light and at least by adding this in I have that super light sort of base layer underneath and I'm not going all the way down to the bottom I'm kind of leaving the very tip that way I can add slightly more color on those ones for these one the little leaves here on the tail um i'm not going to go super dark on those in the shadow just because they kind of go out rather than then sort of underneath but the leaves on the belly and that goes underneath i'm going to get make those really dark in the end when we sort of get in and do all the shadows and stuff so I know it's a little bit hard to see this color here when uh, when I'm coloring, especially sort of on camera, but you will see it if you're following um, and if you're coloring yourself, you will definitely be able to see it with on your own paper. So um, now I didn't mention this, but obviously if you're using different pencils, just sort of look at if you're using your color wheel just sort of match it up to that rather than trying to exactly color match what i'm doing here so just go for like with for example polychromos they got a quite a lot of um good colors in especially like the the red orange range you got more there because it's a bigger set compared to the the light fast and you can also use like the um, the turquoise range for the leaves there's plenty of colors there as well so this you just sort of stick to those two two color tones and then just adjust your colors accordingly and for the the merlot um, you could probably for the like the, the darker red you can probably go in with I'm thinking the Cabot Mortem instead of the Merlot that would work really well I think
So I'm going to go in with the dark turquoise now and start darkening things up. So I'm moving from where I want my darkest area on each thing to be and sort of lightening my pressure as I'm moving upwards.
it's time to add in the mella green and this will just green up these leaves enough that it balances out on the color wheel because obviously we want a green blue or a blue green and not like a blue blue so as you can see now it's just sort of enough just to bring it into the range that I wanted and it's sort of darkening it up a little bit but it's obviously not our main sort of shading so I want to use my sort of black for this but I just I just like this color so much they work so well together and you can just really see now sort of how it balances out with that red orange as well and it's sort of really suiting and fitting in together and obviously that's what you want to do with the color wheel if you're using it you want to make sure that you're getting your balances right so that you're using a complementary color rather than something sort of just a little bit off but it's looking really really nice and I'm liking it so I'm sort of going over the little lines um, the, like the little veins as well and just pulling those out um, to make it look like they're sort of dipping in a little bit and then obviously I'm using this as my main dark color down the bottom of these leaves as well as I said I'll probably I'm not quite sure whether or not I'll do these ones especially the ones just on the back here and on the tail too much darker than this but we'll see if it makes sense once I start eliminating the black outlines and stuff.
So down here on the belly, what I'm going to do is just really pay attention to the areas where we have any overlapping. So we have this nice big leaf here in the center. So I'm making sure that I'm sort of going underneath where anything is lying on top because that would obviously be a little bit darker and just making sure that I'm building up my color and my shadows in those areas. Also here underneath the belly where it curves around you would expect there to be more shadows um, especially because as I explained we have the light source coming from sort of higher up above so pretty much if you have your highlight up the top you want your shadows down the bottom and so it kind of just makes sense but at the same time here we do have some overlapping so I'm gonna try to make make it so that we have little bit of a difference between the leaf that's lying on top of another one so we have while they're all going to be dark I just want to make sure that adds this like a tiny bit of a difference there so you can see I've left a little bit of a lighter area on the top leaf and sort of towards the edges of each leaf I'm just going over with my lightest color again on the highlighted area just to get a little bit more of a layer down and then I'm going to go ahead and blend with my little paper stump and my blending solution so I'm just want to make sure that you have enough that I've got enough pigment down onto the paper first before I start using the blending solution now most of the darker areas, they've already got four layers down, so I don't really, especially with these pencils, you can get away with about four layers. Um, if you're using polychromos, you might need sort of five or six just to ensure that you have enough pigment there for the blending solution to work with.
Now while I wait for these leaves to completely dry, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to our little red-orange part here and I'm just going to start working up more of my shadows. So I'm just going straight in with my Merlot and I'm just working down underneath the tail here and the same, I'm going to do the legs um, and sort of the neck and those sort of areas. I might also start adding in a little, little bit of shadows sort of underneath where the leaves are um, just sort of where they overlap a little bit I'm still not sure how much I'm going to put on the ones on the tail just working their way up the back but I'll probably put a little bit there just to give it a little bit of depth It's time to start bringing in my black. So for my warm areas here, I'm going to use the Mars Black, which is a black that's got a red undertone to it. That is one of the things I really like about this set of pencils, is those three different hues of black. We have, as I mentioned, we have like the black black, which is like a neutral in between and then we have the mask black which has got the red undertones and we have the midnight black which has got the blue undertones to it so that way you have one to use for your warm areas and one to use for your cool areas and that is really really nice so that way you don't have to kind of blend so much
as you can see I'm leaving a little bit of a slightly lighter area just on the top of the foot of the legs here especially sort of that back leg um, because it's obviously it's underneath so it's not getting as much light but I'm thinking that that just that top part will be just a little bit darker no sorry not darker lighter on the foot there so I'm just making sure that I have that slightly lighter area there and the same here like on the foot here I want, just want to make sure that underneath the foot it goes a bit darker where it kind of curves in and around and also sort of on the back of the heel there making sure that that goes nice and dark and I'm just doing exactly the same on this sort of front leg like I did on the back leg as well leaving that top of the foot a little bit lighter and now I'm just going to go ahead and move up the neck a little bit just going under the start of the neck here in between the little leaves I just want to make sure that that goes nice and dark as well now just make sure that when you are using this black don't move too far up because you can use like your merlot and your scarlet um, to go further up you want to leave this sort of black area for like your darkest darkest shadows and that gives it that roundness that you can see starting to form and then a bit later when I'll go ahead and I'll start removing some outlines with my white um, jelly roll especially sort of up on my lighter areas there you will really see the dinosaur take shape and really round itself around because we don't have that harsh black line up the top in the lighter areas I'm just going to switch over now to my midnight black and I'm going to just get started on the leaves on the on the top of the back I'm going to leave the ones sort of down here for now I'm not sure whether I'll use black with that or if I'm going to work in sort of with my blue green colors yet but I know that I want these on the top of the back to have that dark area just sort of down the bottom just because I've, I feel like they are going to curve around a little bit so that we have the like the, the top of them are going to be lighter and the base of them are going to curve in underneath a little bit so I'm thinking that they will be a little bit darker than what we have on the top.
So these little leaves here that go up the leg, they are sort of in an area where it curves around a little bit. So I'm just trying to make sure that I get the shadows sort of towards the, the base of each leaf and then just a little bit up the side with the top part of the leaf being the lightest area and especially towards like the middle of the leg. Up here we have like the big thigh area. It does curve even though it's a lighter area here. Um, the thigh kind of does curve around a little bit so I am creating that movement by adding a little bit of shadows. Now I'm just going to go ahead and really work around these sort of overlaps and make sure that the top leaf sort of casts a shadow on the leaf below. So I just want to make sure that way we get that movement, we get the layering effect of the leaves lying on top of each other and casting the shadows and that creates more depth and dimension to your picture. Now I'm going to go in with my dark turquoise again and just add another layer to the leaves on the tail and up the back there and then I am going to go in with the midnight black but because I have this extra layer down on with a slightly lighter color I won't be able to put down as dark a layer so the lighter the colors you have underneath when you're adding darker colors they don't have as much tooth to grip onto so it means that you can lighten up that color a little bit if you don't want it like super pitch black. So I'm just doing this now to start with and then I'm going to go in and find the little overlappings. There's a couple of overlappings on the, the last couple of leaves here. So I want to make sure that we get those in with the midnight black and then I'll just go in and create a little bit more shade on like the line work inside each leaf just so we have those veins in there a little bit more prominent 
and I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of black just to the tips of the like the bottom of the leaves where it starts curving around. So you can really see now like I didn't add a whole lot of the black but it's just enough to create a tiny little bit of, uh, of movement and that curvage on the tail. I'm going to start removing some of these black outlines. I tend to use a Sakura Jelly Roll. Usually, if I'm just going on the outlines, I would have used a 05. Um, but my 05 have kind of dried up and I can't get it to work. So I'm just using my 08. I just can't justify buying a whole new set just to get another one more of my 05. So I'm just work, working my way in very, very gently. I'm not pushing hard. Um, I'm sort of just touching the paper and just making sure that I'm not putting down like a super thick line or anything like that. So I'm going to do the same just up the top here and anything that's sort of out in the lighter areas. I'll leave the bottom just because we have the dark areas there anyway, so it doesn't matter um, if I leave that line. Um, but all those highlighted areas really sort of softens up and it helps it sort of feel like it's more curved around and gives it more movement, I think, when you move remove those top areas here.
All right, we're well, pretty much done just removing the outlines that I don't want anymore. So what I'm going to show you now, I'm going to swap over to my Jelly Roll size 10. That's a little, that's the thicker one that I've got. And we're going to make a sort of like a highlighting line. This is not a technique that I use overly frequently. The exception being if I'm coloring like glass or something like that, that's like super shiny. I will then go in and do these kind of lines. But I thought I'd show you just because we are talking about um, shading and highlighting and I just want to just show you that this is an, a method that you can sort of use so I'm just making these sort of lines oops I think I <laughs> went a little bit too far down there I'll fix that up in a bit so I'm just making a little bit of a sort of thick thick line here and especially sort of where my main highlight is and it kind of just looks like it's an area where the sort of the sun is hitting or a light source is hitting now this one here is the one that I feel like it was a bit bad so I'm just gonna rub it out with my finger and I'll just start again so that is a bit better so I kind of want it to go completely parallel to where the back line is just slightly further down now you can add a few layers of this once it's sort of dried up there's a little area of the top here. Maybe I should make a little line here. Oops, it's not working. <laughs> Let me just get that working again. And let's do it up here first. See, I'm just, I'm just doing a little couple of little dots. This is also something you can do. Um, doing dots is something that's actually really good to do on like a background just to break it up. Um, it's good to make like little stars or things like that. So I'm just going ahead and just thickening up this sort of line here a little bit just so it's a bit more visible. And once these lines are completely dry, you can gently go ahead and color over the top of them. I'll show you that in a bit as well. You just want to make sure that you have, if you're using these sort of lines, you can kind of go in a little bit thick here. So that's sort of what I'm doing now. So it kind of looks like it's got that sort of highlight where the sun is hitting and making it sort of a little bit bright. So there's a few different ways, as I said, that you can use your, your highlighting. So let's see, I might just... Should I do one here? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I might go I might remove it in a bit I'm not 100% certain on that but we're just testing things out you just want to look for places where the Sun or the light source would naturally hit and that's where you kind of want to make those little lighter lighter areas no I didn't like those <laughs> it was a bit too thick let me just go on those two dots that's there I'll just do those and I'm just going to let that dry in a bit and then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to color over the top. And while I do that, I'm just going to go in and just start adjusting a little bit more. Quite often when you've removed some outlines, you'll find that you will see whether your picture makes sense or not. And that's often the time to go in and adjust um, your shadows. You might want to make your darker areas slightly darker to then have your highlighted areas pop out a little bit more so that's just what i'm doing here now i'm not going in obviously with a super dark color i'm just going in with my scarlet red and that's sort of like my my mid-tone if you want so i can afford to pull this up a little bit further i can make i can really make that sort of red orange tone sort of or hue sort of stand out a little bit more so and that's sort of what I'm doing now I'm just adjusting until I'm happy
So now that my jelly roll is dry, I'm just going to go over very, very gently with the mustard colour here. I'm still not 100% on these sort of thigh leg highlights. <laughs> I might, I don't know, I might scrape them off later on. But I'll leave them there just to, for you to look at. So in the, the warm areas here, I'm just going in with the yellow and then I'll stop here when I get to the cool leaves and I'm going to go in with like a lighter one of my turquoise sort of blue greeny kind of colors. So just using the light aqua over the top here just to give that little bit of color. Just be a bit careful like so you don't, don't push down too hard as you can see here. I just scraped off a tiniest little bit but it's all right. It doesn't really matter too much but just be gentle when you are coloring on top of your jelly rolls. So I'm just going to add in the little ground underneath, so I'm just going to go with relatively earthy green tones. We have that really bright one in the middle for the middle dinosaur, so I kind of want to slightly match the top dinosaur for this one because we've got kind of, kind of similar colours as that one, so I figured that will be... That should be all right so I'm just going to do a layer of this and I'm gonna do a little bit of mixing just to get the color that I want so I want one that's not super yellow and then I'm gonna have one that's a little bit more yellow um, undertones as well and I'll blend those together and then I'll go in I'm thinking with the seaweed maybe for some of the shady the shadowy parts here
with shading on the ground here I'm gonna go in with my seaweed and I'm gonna pay particular attention sort of underneath the feet I'm just going to add a little bit here and then I'm just gonna go under the feet of the dinosaur and just working my way a little bit backwards towards the tail there now I want it to be especially dark where the feet are actually touching the ground just because we have more more of the dinosaur like closer to the ground so it's going to cast a little bit more of a shadow just right there and then you have the sort of the bases are more light coming in where the dinosaur is further up from the ground so really here because we only got this tiny little bit of ground there i'm basically just going to focus on those sort of general areas and just here on the grass there i just want to make sure that we get just a little bit just underneath like the grass the little rocks there and just sometimes yeah i do like to add a little bit of green sort of to the rocks and things as well because they often got a bit of moss and things on them but yeah just anything that's touching the ground is probably going to cast give you a darker shade so that's what i tend to do
now once it's dry just that uh, sakura jelly roll on the grass and things i'll probably just go over with my lighter screen there and just add a little bit just to remove some of the like the white white but i think we're doing pretty well here as well i'm just sort of again just touching up a little bit of shadows now that we've removed those outlines and once i've done that i reckon we are done so i hope you've enjoyed this little series that we've done on this page we've learned about layering blending and shading so i hope you've had fun joining in coloring along or just watching and hopefully you've learned some new tips and tricks this is the full page if i'm gonna pick if i'm gonna pick like a favorite favorite i think i like the colors of the middle one the best and i'm liking the shading on the bottom one the best so there you go i wish you all a really colorful day and I can't wait to see you again next time.